Hello everyone, now today's video is a long time coming, like two months or something, but that's beside the point. Today people, we are going over the successor of the legendary 3930K, the Haswell E-based i7 5930K. For y'all just wanna see the benchmarks, just go to the minute. Now that those guys are gone, let's get into the good stuff. Yeah, so this right here is a very cool CPU, featuring 6 cores and 12 threads, as well as quad channel DDR4 memory support for incredible memory bandwidth. It has a lot of creature comforts, like BCLK strap for the CPU, which will come in handy later. It also has extreme overclocking related settings like independent core disabling, that is gold when going for insane frequencies. But we'll go over that in more detail in another video. Let's get into benchmarking. And for today's platform, we'll be using an ASUS Sabertooth X99 motherboard paired with 16GB of Team Group Dark memory running at 2666CL15 and of course my trusty Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. Today we'll be testing the CPU with a Vega 56, running flashed with a Vega 64 BIOS and all the games will be tested at 1080p with high or max out settings. We'll be testing at stock with performance enhanced turned on for an all core turbo boost of 3.7 GHz and in an overclocked state with an 125 BCLK strap for 4.625 GHz. Also, the memory will be overclocked uh, and pushed to 3000 MHz at CL16. First up, the Cinebenches. Now, in R15, we scored with the overclock 1386 points, which is very respectable even by today's standards. And in R20, we settled for a sweet score of 3208. This was a hard benchmark to run, as the CPU was consuming upwards of 280 watts and I actually needed to ice cool the thing. So, a very decent cooling solution is recommended for a 4.6 GHz overclock with an AVX2 load. CPU Z and pass mark time. In CPU-Z we scored a very, very respectable 515 points in single and almost 4000 points in multi. For comparison, Horizon 7 2700X maxes out at about 480 and 5000 respectively, so a great showing for this 6 core CPU. In Passmark, we scored 13000 points with again a great single core speed, single core result at 2577 points. Overall. I was very impressed with this chip. Next up, Geekbench, and hardware bot video rendering benchmark, which you can run at home to compare the data, link in the description. In Geekbench 4, we scored a cool 5500 points in single and 28000 points in multi. The CPU crushed the hardware bot 1080p rendering test, averaging out 44 FPS, but 4K was too much for the cooler again, so a more reserved overclock would be recommended. That being said, we ain't here for that puny stuff, max performance only. Now into gaming benchmarks. We tested a suite of 5 games, Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege and of course The Division. Starting off with the fan favorite, of course CSGO. Here in the in-game benchmark we averaged out a more than impressive 355 FPS with the lows into the 30s when the smoke scene came. This is superb performance and well more than playable. Also, managed to hit 936 FPS in this corner. Nice results. Far Cry 5 is up next, and this is a very single thread based game, as it likes fast cores. Here, the 5930K shined, averaged a sweet 105 FPS in the overclock state, and still a good 95 FPS while running stock frequencies. For a more balanced title, I chose Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here we got 91 FPS while running at 4.6 GHz and 90 FPS result at stock, showing that even with a Vega 56, this game is still GPU bound, like most other modern titles would be. This is more so when we are going for higher resolutions such as 2K or 4K. Into Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege we go. Here we see the same story, not much difference between the overclocked and the stock results. 311 FPS and 312 FPS respectively, so another GPU bottleneck. And for the last game that we are going to test today is The Division. Here we see again a GPU bottleneck. Remember this is running at 1080p max details 
and the Vega GPU is still a relatively good GPU. So seeing so many GPU bottlenecks drives home the point that the CPU does not matter that much after a point. Concluding the gaming results, we can see that an overclock is barely justified with this CPU. Although it helps out with the synthetic benchmarks, the difference is marginal in games, where the CPU is more than capable to hit high numbers of frames per second. Paired even with a high-end GPU, this CPU would be enough to supply it with data. Overall, I was very, very impressed with this chip. Looking at it from the perspective of an old 3940K owner, I finally see a worthy successor. This CPU is a true monster, even if it still has a 6-core configuration. And if you can find it for a decent price, like $50 to $75, paired with a decent X99 motherboard for another $100 to $120, this is a definite good buy. However, we have to face the elephant in the room. If you can snag a Ryzen 5 2600X or a Ryzen 7 2700X for less, definite, definitely go with that. AM4 has an upgrade path that is far, far superior and that goes a long way. And with that said, this is the end of the video. I'll be looking into making an X99 overclocking guide for those out there that are trying to get this chip to its max performance. But that is the end of this one. So thank you for watching and see you in the next <laughs> yeah, one. Boy.